Got some past exam questions on group two that you can test yourself using. So if you click on the link in the description, it'll take you to the questions. Have a go and then play on for the answers. Okay, so question one, which equation represents a redox reaction? So the answer is A, I'll just explain why. So we're using oxidation numbers to establish if there's been an oxidation and a reduction process in the same reaction. So if you think about magnesium, it starts out as the element, so it's got a zero oxidation number, it goes to plus two in that compound magnesium chloride, so that's an oxidation process, it's an increase in oxidation number. The hydrogen starts at plus one, and it decreases oxidation number to zero, so that's a reduction process. So A is the redox reaction. Question two, which statement is not correct for group two metals? Well, the answer was A again. So the statement that's not right is an unpaired electron is present in an S orbital. Well, all the S orbitals in group two metals are S2. So they've got that up down configuration for the electron in the orbital. And so they're always paired. Moving on to question three. So dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in magnesium chloride. So you can see there, I've circled that. That's ionic bonding, because you've got a metal and a non-metal. So you need the square brackets. We only need to show outer electrons. So for the metal, you've got a choice. You can either do an empty outer shell, or because I've used the dot there for the extra electron in the chloride ions, you could do eight dots. So that's fine as well, okay? The chloride ions, you need two separate chloride ions, each with a one minus charge, seven electrons uh, for the chlorine, and then that extra electron, which has obviously come from the magnesium. Number four, we've got this flow chart of group two reactions, essentially. So reactions one and two both form calcium oxide. Write the equation for reaction one. So we're going from calcium to calcium oxide. So it's obviously reacting with oxygen. So you can either write it like that or you can get rid of the half if you don't like that and you can balance it with a two there and a two there. A couple of definitions now for part B. What's meant by the terms base and alkali? So a base is simply just a proton or an H plus acceptor. An alkali is a soluble base which releases hydroxide ions into the solution. Part C. A student prepares some calcium hydroxide by adding a small piece of calcium to a large excess, that's significant, a large excess of water. Describe what the student would observe and write the equation. So obviously hydrogen gas is produced, so you'd see bubbles. You don't need to say of hydrogen, but if you are going to specify the gas, make sure you get the right gas. Um, and the other thing is, because it's excess water, all of that calcium would dissolve. So they would, you'd need to say that as well. And the equation looks like that. Student prepares a solution of calcium nitrate from calcium carbonate. So they're obviously reacting the calcium carbonate with an acid to make the salt. So which reagent, which acid would the student use? They use nitric acid to make a nitrate salt. And there's the equation. Question five, to which block of the periodic table does strontium belong to? Well, strontium's in group two. Group two is the S block. And the reason is the highest energy electron is in an S subshell. Okay, so moving on to B now. So this is a calculation. Typical hydrated salt calculations get you to work out the value of the numbers of water of crystallization. This one's told us what they are, and it's a slightly different type of question. So I always like questions that are a little bit different. So we've got the MR of the hydrated salt. We're told how many grams of hydrated salt are heated. It loses some, not all of its water of crystallization, and we're told how much of the solid product we, are, we get at the end of the reaction. So we've got to use all that information to work out the formula of the solid that's formed. So what I've done is I've constructed a, an equation. So SRCL2.6H2O. Well, obviously, we don't know the value of the water crystallization in the final product. So I've said that that's Y. And I've said that X uh, waters are produced as well. I've then put the masses in. So 5.332 grams, we're told that. We're told that we get that many grams of solid product. And that, so the difference is how much water we've got. So from that, we can work out the moles of hydrated salt that was heated. So that's mass over MR, 0 0.02. And we can work out the moles of water that's formed. Mass over MR again, 0 0.08. So obviously the ratio there is 1 
to four. So one mole of this makes four moles of water. So if one mole of that's got six waters in, it's lost four. So the remainder is two. So the product that's formed at the end must be SLCO2.2H2O. Now there is another way to do this calculation. So I'll go through this method just in case anybody's done it this way. So from the moles of um, hydrated salt that was heated, we can say that from this ratio, one to one, that you're gonna get the same moles of this stuff made. We know the mass of that. So the MR of it is mass over moles. So it's 194.6. Now if we subtract from that, the MR of SRCL2, that's minus 158.6 you get 36 left over. So that's obviously for the YH2O part. Divide by 18 gets you two waters. So either way, you get the same answer. Okay, so final page now. Chemist carries out reactions of barium and barium nitride. We're given the formula of that. Reaction one, barium is reacted with water. Reaction two, barium nitride is reacted with water forming an alkaline solution. So alkalis have hydroxide ions associated with them and an alkaline gas. Well, there's only one alkaline gas we need to know about at certainly at A-level chemistry and that's ammonia. So sort of clues there when it comes to react, writing this equation. And then we're told some information about barium peroxide, which kicks in in the third part of the question. Right, so reaction one is just the reaction of a group to metal barium in this case with water. So straightforward there. The reaction between barium nitride and water to make this alkaline solution and alkaline gas, well, the alkaline solution is going to be barium hydroxide and the alkaline gas, I've already said, is ammonia. And so to get that to work and balance, that's the answer there. Predict the structure and bonding of barium nitride. So again, a bit like we had at the start of the paper, ionic bonding because you've got metal and non-metal. So the bonding is ionic and all ionic substances have a giant structure. So giant ionic's the answer. Okay, so the final part of the question. So we've got um, barium oxide formed in reaction three contains barium peroxide ions. We're gonna to have to draw a dot and cross diagram for that. So just remember it's uh, metal, non-metal. So ionic, square brackets, charges and that. So the barium ion looks like that, or you could have a full outer shell. Um, the peroxide ion, so we've given, the, we've given the structure for that. So the thing I'm going to focus on is this single line between the O's. That means there's a single covalent bond between the O's. So we're going to need a pair of electrons, a shared pair of electrons going on there. And then there's a two minus charge. So there's obviously two extra electrons to factor in. So the dot and cross diagram, if you think about oxygen, it's in group six. So it's got six outer electrons. So if we put one in the shared bit, two, three, four, five, six, same with that one, but I'm just going crosses now. And then these are the extra electrons. So they've obviously come from the barium. So I've gone for a different shape. So I've gone for triangle, just to, so that you can see the different electrons. Going back to this, so using my answer there, I would have to draw um, eight triangles in the outer shell of barium.